Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to these lightning talks. Our first speaker, I'm going to run straight into it, is going to be Rosie Stevenson Goodnight. Did I get that right? Uh, yes. And so she's going to be talking about the um, Women Writers Project, and we're going to... Yeah, is that right? Great. And so we're going to just launch right in, and I want to remind you, if there's time for questions, to please not speak until you have the microphone. Thank you. Hi, everyone, and thanks for coming to this session where we're going to talk about Women Writers in Review, a cultures of reception associated with transatlantic English language women writers broadly construed. Women Writers in Review is an initiative of the Women Writers Project at Northeastern University. It moved there from Brown University approximately 15 years ago. Women Writers in Review is a collection of 18th and 19th century reviews, publication notices, literary histories, and other texts corresponding to transatlantic, so UK and US mostly, though a few Canadian written works by women. It's a project where the two universities, Brown University and Northeastern University, started collecting the manuscripts of women from this period. And then they started collecting the reviews of these works, and then they started scoring these reviews by giving them a rating. It's designed to investigate the discourse of reception in connection with the changing transatlantic literary landscape for the period 1770 to 1830. You're going to pardon me if I speak fast because I've got five minutes to go over this. It includes 690 English language texts responding to works written or translated by 18th and 19th century women writers. There are 74 authors in the corpus using 112 different sources or periodicals or magazines, and there are 628 critical reviews. Here's a picture that shows you what we're talking about in terms of a review. And you can also see what kind of scores were um, given by the uh, academics at Northeastern University. Most of these are women who were giving scores based on the reviews that were done mostly, probably all men back in this time period, 1770 to 1830, of works written by women. By works, we're talking about plays and novels and poems, um, essays and other kinds of articles. So what are we talking about? It, this required creating items for authors, for their works, like I said, novels and plays and poems. It, cre it required creating new items for this very um, period of time where there are defunct um, periodicals. It required creating items for the scholarly articles, and then the review scores of each, and the review score by, which in this case would be women writers in review, and what we still need to add is the described by source. This gives you a, a picture of uh, the kind of spreadsheets, Google spreadsheets, that I've been working on. And I shouldn't just say I, because I've had a lot of help. I've had a lot of people who are working on this project with me. And you can see at the top something about the authors, about the works. The third group is going to be the um, periodical, and then how the scores started showing. And of course, this is how they look, when it, how the, the beauty of being able to present um, the preliminary findings. Once we have uploaded all of the data, um, and I hope that that's going to be done by the end of this year, uh, it, this will obviously look different. Appendix. So here's what the, the depiction looks like at the Northeastern University website. I don't think it's quite as clear as what we can do with Wikidata. And so this was probably the reason why, when I started as a visiting scholar in 2017, they asked if this is one of the projects that I could work on. They stopped their work in, uh, the year before, in 2016. And I think they just don't have the resources to continue. Some parts of this presentation came from another that was published in 2016. And Last but not least, here are links to the different parts of the um, work that I'm doing. Thank you very much. Questions? Sorry, 
So when you have a, a work and you have the review of the work, is are you looking at a particular edition of the work, or are these all reviews of first editions? It's a good question. No, they are not just reviews of the first edition. Some are reviews of a second or third edition. I want to add something that maybe I should have said before I closed and went to question and answers. What's so special about this? What's special is nobody else has done this on Wikidata. Surely there are other universities that have their own collections where their scholars have reviewed the reviews of someone's work in, in some language. So hopefully, once this methodology gets, uh, once I write this up and the project is over and presented again, that there will be other universities, other libraries that will speak up and say, we've got data sets too, and we're going to go ahead and um, upload them into Wikidata ourselves, and then it'd be lovely to start doing some comparisons. Anyone? Jane. Do you actually have the books? Are the books in existence? Or are you actually doing metadata about books where you know, we, we don't no, even know where the books are? No, Northeastern University actually has the book or the essay or the poem. And they have the critical review of the book or the essay or the poem. And they're working on the transcription of these. And they're not at 100% yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're not at 100%, but it's like all things working on it. Any other questions? We're going to wrap it up there. Thanks for being such a nice audience. <laughs> Ladybug for... Finally got there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on these to load um, just while... Um, uh, is that new tab there? The first one, yeah, perfect. <laughs> Sorry, my German is, is not even rusty. It's just simply non-existent. Uh, so uh, I'll just let them load because then these queries can run while I'm sort of uh, introducing what I was talking about and doing. So hi, I'm Nav from Histopedia, um, and uh, basically for the last quite a few years we've been relatively quiet while we've been sort of working on technology and tools that we need to sort of develop ultimately Histopedia version 2, which is going to be, you know, this huge enhancement on the first version. Uh, well, it's kind of in progress, but as we do it, we've been experimenting with these other tools and building the technology that we're going to need. Um, one really crucial part for this is the ability to sort of see the whole of, of history from the billions of years time scale to, you know, uh, to up to, you know, the current day and zooming all the way into single days and ultimately in the end down to hours and minutes, 
We've managed to create at last this sort of update to our engine. Other engines can already do this, but unfortunately they also can't handle the large data sets. So we've finally got this update to our engine that allows us to zoom to billions of years. Um, so recently, recently finished uh, update, and it's basically it's an update to our query viewer tool, which is like a live version of Histopedia, just linked straight to Wikidata. Uh, so it's literally based on a query, a live query, and we see the results of it. Uh, so it's sort of separate to our main tool. Um, so. I'm going to flick to the first one, which was my first experiments. And, you know, you'll forgive me, the queries, the, 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 the code was kind of finished not so long ago. And the queries, I've been trying to find out what can I find and what's interesting to look at, what's missing. So I started off with a kind of a um, sort of, uh, well, so that's not the right, that's not life on earth, is this life on earth? That will do anyway. So I started off just trying to look at um, uh, what sort of things we uh, are actually in Wikidata. Um, and this particular one, sorry, it's in reverse. So this is the first one I wanted to show you. Uh, so this is a kind of a life on Earth query that I wanted to develop. And basically what it is, is all the taxons in Wikidata that have a date. And as you can probably see from the panel, there is not many of them, but we do have the different taxon ranks. So, you know, is it a species, a class? Say for biologists, this makes a lot of sense. Um, but if I was just to close that a bit, we can see we're going back to the earliest forms of life here, 3.5 billion years ago. And as we zoom in here, we start to see the more modern forms of life. And we see sort of, you know, some really interesting things developing, but we're still lacking a lot of data in terms of this kind of time range. Um, <laughs> So my next thought was, okay, well, uh, why aren't, I want to see Tyrannosaurus rex. That's what I really wanted to see on my query, and it wasn't there. So I had a little dig in, and I found out why. Uh, it's because they're, they're, they're much more being stored in terms of the temporal range or time period that they relate to. So on comes the next query, uh, where I actually sort of, I, I, basically this query is looking for uh, any item that has a temporal range start and or, and or a temporal range end, which is basically in the form in life forms, it kind of relates to when they emerged and when they became extinct. So these are the periods on the side here. Uh, if I just close that a bit, you can see that we have uh, quite a lot of interesting stuff. And there's the Tyrannosaurus that I was looking for. Uh, you know, so I finally got that, and I was like, yes, I've done it. I've got that Triceratops in there for bonus. Uh, but of course still loads missing and I'd love to see lots more here but at least it, it gives you the idea the nice thing is here as well if I if I star some of these you can see that the time ranges are shown so you can start to do what I really wanted to do was say like okay when when did this one end and when did the next one begin you know when did things start going extinct so I was pretty excited but still really hoping for a lot more so there's a lot of editing to be done in terms of these large geological and uh, cosmic time scales um, you can see on the color code, I can also do extinction period. So I say, you know, I want to find out stuff that was, went extinct in the late Cretaceous, and I now know that two things did that. There's obviously quite a few more. Uh, and, I, I, you know, I put the taxon rank in there as well, just so that we can also see, okay, which, which is it, species, genus, etc. cetera. Um, so pretty exciting. I was quite happy, but, uh, you know, it's, it's unfolding what needs to be done uh, a lot. Uh, so on to the next one, which was... I was thinking, well, I can't find all the dates I'm looking for. Let's go a bit more general and just look for all uh, of a certain kind of dates in Wikidata that I can find that are 10, uh, over 10,000 years old, basically. Um, and what type of thing are they? So this color code is relatively OK, but it might be a bit misleading because some things are multiple types. So therefore, it's a bit random at times. But you get some really fascinating stuff in here. I've got, for a start, I've got all, the all of the millennia that we have in, uh, in Wikidata, which is, uh, you know, there you go. Uh, read about everything that happened in all these different millennia. No pictures for any of these, unfortunately, so there's nothing to really say what happened in them. Uh, taxon, which we were just looking at, which kind of led me on to the, the, the other queries. Um, and, of course, that's sort of like all of them in one group. Interesting stuff, archaeological cultures, and this is like, okay, this is more like up my street. This is the sort of things I want to learn about. Uh, again, pictures would be nice, but it's, uh, it's really showing you something interesting. And it's just worth exploring here. And of course, there's some that really made me excited for what we could be doing. Uh, for example, there was something here which was, uh, I mean, system actually was quite an interesting one. Um, and 
sorry, that's not actually the one I was thinking about. In fact, that means nothing to me at all. Someone might know what that means. Uh, art movements, archaeological sites, activities. There was only two of these, but I really like the idea because it's, and they're both the same. They're both hunting. Uh, <laughs> And of course, there's two of them. And the reason is, is because there's a little qualifier on there. Uh, if we were to just look through, we can, see, uh, we can see somewhere down here will be the start time. And the qualifier is talking about when Homo erectus did it and when Homo sapiens did it. Sapiens did it. So uh, that should be in brackets on the query, a little extension to do to show you what the two different versions mean. But I would love to see all of human skills in here. You know, when did we first do farming? When did we first do this? When did fire come about? All of these things. When did we first extract iron? When did we first... All these wonderful things that de de developed a modern sort of world that we live in. Uh, so really exciting signs of what could be there if it all got populated. So, you know, this is what we really need to work on is some of this historical info. Um, Last one I just wanted to just show you, which was just a, an extra bonus one that I threw in, just to look at the, um, uh, the time periods that we actually have, the historical ages that we have in Wikidata. Um, and so this is actually just all subclasses of unit of time. And then this is the actual instance of the, the, that it was. So, uh, and it's just really interesting. This is more the kind of thing that in Histopedia Mark II, these are the kind of things that will actually be displayed more under the timeline as a sort of a, a range or period. And so we're, we're particularly interested in these periods being really tight and nice because it helps you to then say what happened when. And uh, you can sound really clever when you talk about when things happened in the Neolithic or the you know, Upper Paleolithic or whatever. Uh, I'm still pretty clueless on most of it because I'm kind of just waiting for the data to be up to scratch. Uh, great. I think I can actually round it up there. Loads more exciting queries to come. A lot more features and cool stuff actually just around the corner for us because we've just finished a lot of cool things. Uh, but there's a little bit of time to pull it all together. So look out for more. Uh, if there's any questions, I think I've got one minute. <laughs> so it would have to be one. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah. Um, very quickly, how can I do my own if I want languages? When do they start, for instance? <laughs> Absolutely, good question. So just click on the... Uh, oh, I've shared this. It's called Co Cosmic Timelines on the URL. Should be cosmic and geological, but then it's not a short URL anymore. Uh, so you click on this icon in the top corner there, and then you get to the query page, which is like the home page of this tool. This is where the query is pasted in. So at the moment, I've got the language there if I want to change it to, to something else, Arabic or French or whatever. Um, and here are the, this is the area where you sort of enter in exactly which uh, variables in your query you would like to do each thing. If you put nothing in, it will try and figure it out. But if you want advanced stuff, and really important is the precision, because that's not available on the query service timeline. So you get everything is the 1st of January, 10 billion years ago, you know, which is not what we want to see. Um, and, uh, and the rank, which is quite interesting. My timelines were all based on a very simple rank of site link count, how many different articles there are or something else. But that's how you go and mess around with it yourself. And you put your color codes and your filters in down here, comma separate them if you would like more, and they come up as options in the final tool. And I think that pretty much is it, isn't it? So any other questions, do find me afterwards. Always happy to get cornered with this stuff. I love talking about it. Okay, so thank you very much. Cheers. Is the full screen? Uh, this one? No. <laughs> uh, F. Uh, this? Sorry. Is the full screen? Yeah, full screen. Uh, control. 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 
So, okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, hi, I'm Thibaut Signalada, as, uh, as I say, uh, introduced me. Uh, I'm a software engineer at uh, the French library, National Library. And I'm here today to talk to you about uh, Noemi, which is a, a software uh, of a, the proof of concept and uh, the in the future of the software uh, to the French library to cataloging. Uh, so, in, a, in first, sorry for my English, it's a bit uh, fuzzy. Um, and so, uh, what's Noemi? Uh, so Noemi uh, stands for uh, Noué, les œuvres, expression, manifestation, et item, which in, in English is uh, to link work, expression, manifestation, and uh, items. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, by, based on the FRB, uh, FRBR and uh, IFLA LRM. Yeah? <laughs> anyway. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so this software is, will be used to uh, produce uh, metadata. Uh, it will be used uh, by uh, uh, 600 uh, people in a daily basis. And uh, as I say in the title, it will uh, be based um, on Wikibase. So uh, uh, there is uh, also uh, a format manager. So uh, people using this software uh, will uh, use like a, a code editor but uh, for uh, Mark, Mark format. So with the syntax light, uh, thing like that. Uh, uh, data processing, processing tool, like, uh, like I said, and also uh, authorization management, uh, because uh, there is need, uh, uh, yeah, there is some uh, data which can be uh, modified. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the pack uh, context, uh, so this software uh, will be uh, replacing uh, an old software uh, called ADECAD 02. Uh, it is part of the tra bibliographic transition. So I said uh, earlier, uh, the, the wo no, HOEMI, uh, wo HOEMI in, uh, in English uh, format. Uh, and it will be the, the, the earth of the... Um, the uh, sorry, uh, the, it will be uh, um, irrigating uh, all the IC of the, the BNF with data, and so we we during this POC we have test uh, Wikibase to see if it fit our needs, and uh, it was pretty good. Uh, so, uh, why Wikibase? So, uh, because of the flexibility of the format, we we we, we arrive to um, uh, inject uh, mark uh, intermark for BNF uh, in the database and uh, use it uh, uh, use his, his uh, link management between uh, between entities using Blaze Graph. So, as Wikibase uh, do, uh, we also choose the Wikibase because it was uh, already. Um, uh, it, it, it's uh, it's under uh, history and user account, so it's easy, easiest for us. Uh, and it also has a good. Um, it's it's pretty easy to create bot to uh, watch and uh, curate data, and also to make statistics. Uh, and free and open and sustainable. Uh, yeah, so. I'm, I'm sorry uh, if uh, if you don't understand what I say because I know my English is not that good. <laughs> uh, but uh, during this POC, we we encountered some uh, some trouble. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, the search engine. Uh, I think we we have to 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 create a, um, a another. Well, no, not another, but a supplementary uh, search engine. Uh, to use it with uh, to fit your our need uh, because uh, you need uh, some uh, some um, sh uh, shares like uh, facets face face, face shares uh, and filters uh, also we we have the, uh, like an habit uh, of using PostgreSQL database and uh, for the moment uh, I think we have it using MariaDB. Uh, and we, when we try to, to use uh, PostgreSQL 
it was a bit uh, difficult and some we, we encountered some issue. Uh, and we have also, also some fear about uh, performance uh, because uh, the catalog uh, is uh, about uh, 20 million entities. 20 million bibliographic notice that can be more than 20 million entities actually, uh, and uh, we don't know the time that we will have to to inject them in the wiki base, and how to do it. Uh, so uh, I talk about the POC, but uh, the the real uh, software development has already started. Uh, we we. We start by uh, creating uh, an interface with Wikibase using Java, uh, like Python, uh, P Wikibase, uh, P PyWikibot. PyWikibot, yeah, thank you. Uh, the same way, but in Java. Uh, we also inject uh, already the format into the Wikibase, and uh, we we do some uh, uh, something like the the intermark editor, uh, highlight, uh, etc. Thank you. Yeah. So, faceted search would be a nice feature in the uh, Wikidata UI itself. So, have you talked to any of the developers, or is that something that could it's, be done? Sorry, I don't Fa faceted, the faceted search yeah. idea? I mean, it would be nice to be able to search only humans or search only works or something, right? Yeah. Um, I, I, sorry, I don't... Uh, I don't uh, but, yeah, I mean, so it would be nice if we had that in Wikidata itself in the UI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, uh, but uh, I think uh, we'll... I don't know if we want to do it uh, inside Wikibase or in the uh, annex uh, systems for the moment. We did not uh, really um, uh, solve that uh, for the moment, I think. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. uh, I suppose on, on the topic of the faceted search, Yeah. Um, a Wikidata Sparkle query, a Wikibase Sparkle query, is, I think, functionally equivalent to a facetable search. Uh, so it's, it's mostly an interface issue, right? I mean, you could build an interface that starts with a query and then gives you possible facets to filter by. And when you click one of them, it adds a condition to the Sparkle query, right? Uh, yeah, but I think the Sparkle uh, didn't go... Um, as uh, details I we want, as uh, we have, um, we uh, when we inject the format, we use a statement for um, I, I, the format is uh, like uh, XML, so it's a zone, subzone, and value. And uh, in the set statement, we we add the, the subzone because uh, the zone was already there, and um, we want to to query uh, some um, qualifier on this, and I don't. No, if the, the Sparkle is go through that actually uh, in a in a faster fa fast way, uh, I think we we need uh, some index uh, for to fast fast this uh, this uh, charge. Yeah. To do to do proper string searches in Sparkle is very hard. You have to add filters, which are slow, and it's, it it yeah. really doesn't work that well. So it's a different yeah. search problem, really. More question? If anyone has one. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Nielsen, speaking about the tool Odia. Thank you.
Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm Finn Orb Nielsen, and a couple of years ago I started Scolia that uh, display uh, data from Wikidata via uh, Sparkle query to the Wikidata query service. So we can generate, for example, a list of publications for a specific author. Now last year, uh, Wikidata uh, introduced lexicographic data, and I transplanted the idea of Scolia, that is using, using a Wikidata uh, and the, the Wikidata query service to generate overviews of lexicographic data. So Audia is, is the example of this one here. So it uh, generates, uh, it's a web application running from the Toolforge service, and for example, it uh, dynamically uh, generates uh, a page source as this one here, statistics over uh, what there is of uh, lexi lexicographic data in uh, Wikidata. So for example, uh, the number of lexemes is currently into over 200,000. So there's a range of things you can do here. You can, for example, look in the aspects and uh, up at the menu, there's quite a, uh, a lot of things here. So I will search on a specific Danish lexemes, uh, which is red in Danish. So you basically get the, uh, for the a specific le lexeme, the same type of information that you could see in the, in the ordi ordinary part of Wikidata here, uh, annotations about the lexeme, annotation about the forms, uh, singular plural forms, uh, annotation about the sentence. And, uh, but what you, what you can't see in ordinary Wikidata is uh, sort of aggregating uh, across lexemes. And this is, for example, uh, done here, down here with the compounds. So in, in Danish, like in German, um, uh, words can be compounded. For example, for red, uh, we have Rødkelk, which is uh, compounded by two, two words. And uh, we got on the second one here, Rødvin, uh, red wine. Uh, the, this list here is constructed by a Sparkle query to the weekday service. And also further down here, we've got, got a lot of Danish uh, words here. Further down here, we should have a, a graph of uh, the uh, words uh, which are compounded from rød. Uh, we have a rød, red here in the middle, and for example, around somewhere around here, we should have, for example, red cabbage, red cabbage salad, uh, red cabbage soup, and so on. So you can browse around in this one here and, and see it. Um, we can go a bit back here and um, then look on the main uh, sense of the word red, red uh, in Danish. So uh, Audia automatically generates uh, information about hyponyms, uh, subconcepts, for example, uh, light red, dark red, pink, purple, and so on, are in the, w when we uh, make a, a Wikidata query service, a Sparkle uh, query, then uh, we go a, um, uh, go around in the Wikidata uh, graph and, and get this information here. And we can also get tran translation automatically, even though it's not necessarily stated within the Wikidata lexemes items. For example, here we have translated to red in English and rød in Swedish and so on. There's not that very many there. There's a range of other things here. Let me show you, for example, uh, this one here. This is Friendes of... Um, now I go over to this one here, inne, which is a feminine suffix. So this is also possible to generate there as a combination of instance of lexemes that are instance of feminine uh, suffixes. And for example, for German, we have uh, Kanzler und Kanzlerin, so in would be uh, a feminine suffix in German. And I put in uh, sort of the the five Danish uh, feminine suffixes of uh, Danish. Another facility is, for example, uh, if you have a text, you can take a uh, copy and paste it into this text to lexemes here. Uh, let me see. Uh, crashed into a greenhouse. Let me change that to English, press submit. Now, Audia would, will then extract each of the word here in this sentence here and try to see whether they are entered in their specific form and lexeme are entered in Wikidata. And, and these simple words here are 
entered in, in Wikidata, but uh, if we, for example, change it to a, there's nothing called van car, but then just let us um, do that here. And you've got uh, down here, uh, it's as a blue link that you can create a new uh, Wikidata Lexin item. Uh, but the range of other things here in the, to explore in this uh, web application, and if there's any suggestions or comments on that, for example, you can contact me or put in an, an issue on, on GitHub. So this particular web uh, application is developed on uh, GitHub, and uh, I'm open for new ideas and ways to represent information there. Okay, thank you. Questions? I love your tool, so can you show the um, languages tabs? Which is awesome for me, I think, to show how many yeah. languages there is. So this is a bit of uh, statistics over the languages, and the uh, Russians have been scraping Wiktionary, and that's why they have now uh, 100,000 lexemes. Um, yeah. There's also a lot of work on Basque uh, here. Yeah. I think there's an organization putting that information in here, and you can also see a, a graph of these. Uh, this is number of forms as functions of number of lexemes. I don't know, uh, up here. Here, you, uh, this is Russian, down here Basque, I think, and English, perhaps, down here. And also in the number of senses, uh, think Basque, English, and uh, Russian, Hebrew, and so on. Yeah. Yeah, that looks like an incredible tool. Uh, but I was just wondering, is it all fully live? Is it all based on Sparkle queries uh, and live, or are there some things that are Yes, aggregated? at the moment, yes. Fantastic. But, uh, yeah, the, the, um, as they get more data into Wikidata, there's a bit of an issue. For example, for Russian here, I started out this uh, year ago when there was not that very many uh, black themes, and uh, so there was no problems with the uh, timeouts but, uh, or uh, sort of representing it here. But uh, if I press Russian... I think there might be some issues. There's a count that works here, for example, the longest words and phrases, but uh, I think that the lexemes are sort of loading in. I, I think I need to fix that as, as Wikidata grows here. You see that there's a lot of Russian nouns, apparently, and I don't know whether the... Apparently, that, that, that's what they're working on. Uh, there seems also be a bit of a time out there. Oh, there. Yeah, well, yes. The first one there. But apparently the longest words and phrases uh, is a bit uh, too expensive. Uh, but apparently you can load there and it's probably... If, yes, it loaded all the 100,000 there, so you can click oh, 10,000 um, <coughs> pages, yeah. If there aren't oh, any other questions... Like Oh, the longest word came now, so it's, uh, yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> what is that? Kim, okay, okay. More questions, or shall we? All right, all right, thank you very much. Help, help. <laughs> Is it good? Mm. Okay. Key source and wiki data. Is it good? Who knows wiki source? More people raising hands every year. That's good. So, um, yeah, this morning Lydia said that Wikivoyage was the first reuser of 
Um, yeah, and Wikisource is not that far behind, but there's a lot to do, and I want to do some basic number statistics about where we are and where I want to go. So, first, there will be a lot of question of what is a book, what is bibliographical data. People from the BNF can agree with me, that can be a nightmare if you go into details. But some big numbers that Google Books, actually, that try to do an estimation on how many books, air quote books, there is in the world, and there's 130 million books in the world. And, yeah, let's put them all on Wikidata, or not, I don't know. But where are we now? And why is it books? Because for Google Books, is everything they scan, basically. They don't have exactly a very clear distinction. There's sometimes two-page two books, which for we, Google Books is a book, but for many people, uh, you have to have at least 50 pages to be a book, so that's always hard to count. Um, but here's what we know on Wikidata. This is the graph of what is a book for Wikidata. You have, uh, that's totally irreadable, but that's Wikidata. Literary work is there, and this is all the subclasses, or subclasses of subclasses, or subclasses of subclasses, of what is a book. So that's very hard to do. I can do a graph like that, but a Sparkle query engine doesn't work if I want to count everything that is instance of these subclasses. And basically, Sparkle says no, timeout. So that's the problem. But I know already that there's a lot of subclasses that we need to look into it. And uh, probably, if you know Wikidata on the page Wikidata point uh, statistics, you have all the numbers by big classes, and you all probably know that the big chunk here is scholarly article, which is uh, thanks to the Wikisite project in particular, um, which can be books or not, depending on definition. Um, you see that there's no subclass books, because there's not enough to show. It's probably somewhere in the overs. The purple area is overs, and there's a lot of things, but under 1%. So basically, we can say that we have less 1% of things identified as books in Wikidata. Maybe there is more books, but not identified as such. And I'm talking about books, but when we are talking about bibliographical data, there's also the author, person, so maybe some of the human here are also authors. Surely. Um, and we need to do another count, which is another big query to do. That times out. So I have a lot of not number today, sorry. Um, so, yeah, basically, this first slide is about how it's complicated to know how much we have of what and how to count them. So, yeah, hard to count. Um, what we know that is uh, we have a lot of properties, six. 7,000, I guess, uh, now on uh, Wikidata. And we know that we have a lot of identifiers among these properties. And we know that three, almost 4,000 4, are properties for identifiers related to bibliographical, like uh, ID at the National Library of France, uh, National Library of Yadi Yadi Yada, because we love identifier of National Library on Wikidata, so we have almost all libraries, national libraries, and more. So we have a lot of properties, I know that, uh, and they are widely used. I know that, for instance, the BNF property is used, uh, BNF is National Library of France, uh, is used one million times, uh, OCLC, VIAF, or the big, like that. Um, are a lot of uses in Wikidata, uh, but it's not because we have a lot of uses of this property in Wikidata that it's complete. As Thibault said, there's more than 20 million books, uh, notices, which is more or less entities, uh, and we have only 1 million, so we have 10, uh, 19 million still to do. Um, also, what we know from the Wikidata side is uh, we have a good, very quite active Wikidata project called Wiki Project Books, uh, where we can we have a model we kind of agree on, which is not always followed, which is, again, a problem. What is a book? 
you know it. Uh, I only have five minutes, so I'm keep going. And then I'm a wiki sourcer, so wiki sourcer. So I wanted to know the other way around what is from wiki source already, because wiki source is already inside the Wikimedia project. A lot of uh, bibliographical records and information. So on the 66 million items on Wikidata, only one, but already one million, is linked to, to Wikisource. That query sparkle works for now. So um, that's very few, but that's quite a lot. And there's a lot of um, offer. There's some books, text, work, edition, whatever. Not always well arranged. And there's a lot of internal pages like categories and templates and things like that. But still one million in total. Um, the Wikisource community are often small communities, like on the French community Wikisource, which is one of the biggest. There's 50 people. That's the biggest we have. So we love Wikidata because, hey, they did a lot of work for us, so just take it from Wikisource. So in this small community, we love to reuse Wikidata data. Uh, right now, we use a lot of a tool which is called WEF, Wikidata Edit Framework. Thank you. Um, and we are eager to see how the Wikidata bridge will work. And we are trying to do things with the um, team in Wikidata, uh, in Wikimedia Dutchland team, UX design team. And there's a lot of um, collaboration in the future that we want to do better integrate, um, do everything in one click when you import a first book in Wikisource, things like that. Uh, better do links uh, between edition and Wikidata. That needs to be done. Uh, the foundation is doing the wish list now, and we have a lot of requests about that. Uh, and yeah, that's it. That was just a short overview. So if you have some questions, I'll take them and be available later if you want to. Come on, you love Wikisource. You have question. I asked you already this in August, and it, I <laughs> wonder if this has already changed. Uh, what is the biggest problem you have in Wikisource right now, from your perspective? The first one only? <laughs> Um, I think because it's a small community, we need efficient tools that work easily because we are not few, we are very few people, so we need tools that are easy to use and yeah, one click solution to rule them all a bit. That's a big dream, but I think that's the most important because that's the threshold on Wikisource is small community. I think it's the most important. Azaf? I'm curious if you can speak to your opinion or the French Wikisource opinion, or maybe you spoke to other communities about the notion of not including metadata about all the world's books that was mentioned in the morning. You know, maybe other Wikibases and other federated databases will have that information, and Wikidata won't. Is that how does that feel for Wikisource? Um. This is my very personal opinion. I know that people in the Wikisource community disagree with that, but uh, I think we need to stay. A wiki, an external Wikibase is not a good solution because we have Shakespeare on Wikisource and we have Shakespeare on uh, Wikipedia. So we need interlink, and interlink is there. Or like uh, Romeo and Juliet, we have them both. So we, need, we are still pretty close to Wikipedia. And the difference with Wikisites, Wikisites have a lot of items which are small, uh, Wikisource is the other way around. We have few items who are big. It can be a scaling problem and everything, but it's quite a small subset of data. So my personal opinion is we should stay in the Wikidata. Um, again, because we are not very much a uh, lot of people, so we need to stay with the tool we know. Don't change too much the tools for the small community, please. So that's it. But I know that other people disagree. You can talk to Sadip uh, if you want. He will have another point of view. Thank you. Uh, fin last question, maybe? Yeah. Some, um, sometimes I, f I find it diff difficult to link the Wikidata item with the Wikisource article because there's, 
uh, a wiki source uh, a novel may be split over several pages and uh, yeah there's yeah. an index page and there's um, perhaps a front page or something like that uh, do, do you have that problem or is yeah. that a general problem or what? yeah that's um, that's one of the first uh, ideas on the wish list for the foundation <laughs> actually yeah because wikipedia is on uh, if you know the ferber organization wikipedia is on the work level and wikisource on the edition level so already you have a problem there and then we have several editions of the same work and we have sub chapters and things inside the edition. So yeah, that's uh, one too many uh, problem which is hard to solve by nature, but there's maybe tool that can help to solve that. Hopefully. And that's time, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you very much, Nicolas. And please join me in giving one more round of applause to all of our wonderful speakers. <laughs>